Israelis, <coughs> what we need to realize is that atheism is actually one part of these religious groups. Firstly, it is Christianity as the biggest religion. Second of all, is Islam, and thirdly, is atheism as the biggest religion, as the third biggest religion in the world. So what you're doing on your side of the house is that you are actually going to enforce uh, and, and promote one of the religions in your society, and you are actually going to increase the tensions between those religious groups if you are basing your argumentation on the premise that those tensions exist. Now, what we need to realize as a second point is that we have never ever in this debate heard what they actually mean by promoting atheism in the world and what they actually mean by promoting atheism in Western liberal democracies. Does this mean they will, they will print out pamphlets to the, uh, to, to, to the people, or they will promote it publicly, or what will they actually do? What they have been telling us is that they just want to have policies not being based on religion, but that is actually the status quo. Now, thirdly, what we, ladies and gentlemen, see is this would not have really a soft response from the religious groups. What they do what is, is uh, religion is a greatly personal thing and a greatly deep thing for a person. When government actually intervenes with what people are very, very, uh, what people feel very, very personally attached to, they actually tend to go vice versa. What you actually want, uh, want uh, the response to be, and we could have seen this actually throughout the whole history. Every time the religion was being actively discouraged, every time the religious groups actually flourished because they promoted, they were promoting something which was oppressed. By the society. We're not saying that you are bringing oppression, we're saying that you are encouraging one religion over the other. Now, and so we believe, ladies and gentlemen, that you can't really change those people. You, should, you shouldn't sure. even try to do so. If I move, uh, move further, yes, please. The purpose of a liberal government is to promote a neutral government. The best way this is done is through atheism, where you, deny, where you don't believe in any one religion and thus prevent one religion from being prized over another. Okay, what you do not realize is religion is defined as some view on God. And that means that religion, uh, that atheism is as such a great, actually a view on God. It is the third biggest religion in the world. So what, what, what you are not realizing on your side of the house is that you are actually going in this religious, in, in this, within this religious difference, and you are actually promoting one of these views over the other. Now, uh, what is, so, so, then we've heard about, about all the examples of abortions in Ireland, same-sex marriages, problems, etc. Yes, we are not uh, denying the fact that sometimes, and very often, religious groups are actually slowing down the progress of the society when it comes to these issues. But firstly, we've never heard from that side of the house why we in the society need to move extremely quickly forward when, we, uh, when, when those advancements can actually be made throughout the human history and throughout the history of Europe. Religious groups have been against many, many things, and they have eventually dropped all of their claims. Now what they are claiming, they, they are standing against same-sex sexual marriages, but we are seeing development within, within European countries, within the United States, that it actually is a move forward. Now, uh, what we believe, ladies and gentlemen, a very important thing is that religion is a very special, has a very special role in our society. Why is this so? Because when when you go when you when you go to your local church or mosque, <coughs> or temple, you are you are being actively uh, encouraged with with the idea of doing good in the world. And I know this. Uh, uh, we're not saying that atheist people, or people who don't believe uh, in God, are immoral people. We're saying that people who do, do believe in religion are being actively encouraged by their religion to do so, because their religion has an active philosophical background which supports the the uh, the, uh, the 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 helping the other people. This is this is the the, the framework that the vast majority of major religions have. Islam does, Christianity does, Judaism does. Uh, Hinduism does. So, we, what we believe, very important to realize, that actually we see religion, as Becky has told you, as a force for good in the world. But what we also believe is that the government should not really fight this this religion, because again, when we when we're talking about religion, we, we're not talking about black or white. We can't say that if, if the religions are actually uh, working or not working. If the religions are good or are bad, if they are actually true or false. And now, now, now a very, very uh, uh, detailed, sorry, uh, an, inform, sorry an impromptu understanding of religion. Even if there is 
what a very, very, very small chance of those religions to be actually true, even if there is a very, very small chance of those religions actually working, we as a government should not oppose these religions because they are promoting the idea that it brings people to salvation. And what we believe that this actually is a beneficial thing for society and we, we believe this to be a great, great thing in the world because religion actually inspires people to, to, uh, to do good. We can hear all these cases of, of, uh, of, of, of doctors and social workers who work in various parts of the world with poor people who are actually claiming that they are being inspired by the religions to do good. We see a great amount of charity taking place in the world. And we say, we're saying, ladies and gentlemen, that if you actively promote atheism, we're not saying that, that, that you will have more immoral people, we're saying that people will not be that actively persuaded by that church to do uh, good and to be the force for good in the world, which actually the religion in this world can be. So for all those reasons that I have actually told you right now, please vote and stick with the side of position. Thank you. within society. So what happens under their side? We do not actively promote atheism and revert back to circularity. What exactly happens is that if a Muslim institution comes and tells you that homosexuality is wrong, it should make it illegal. Under a circular government, you can't exactly go and tell them that no, your religion is wrong and we're not we are still going to legalize homosexuality. Inevitably, you have to pander to this Muslim institution and criminalize homosexuality. And that's exactly what's happening in so many countries around the world. India, to many states in the United States, and even in Singapore. And that's why we ATM is the way forward. Because when you promote atheism, you no longer have to pander to the views of the religious institutions. You can just go and tell them that yes, your religion is wrong, and we're going to go this way because we best fulfill the purpose of a liberal government. And this is the distinction, sir, between the yeah, yeah, This is the distinction between secularity and atheism. Bearing this framework in mind, a simple question for the House today on which side actually best fulfills the objectives of a liberal government. And here we told you, right from our second sentence, this whole idea of protection of society, how the government no longer has to pander to any views. What was their response? Oh no, wait, government intervention is wrong, we should remain circular. I've already shown you the start of my speech, how remaining circular means that now a circular government cannot fulfill the objectives that it, it, it espoused when it got elected on a liberal platform. So they say we want equality for women, a Muslim institution will say no, equality for women is wrong. Women should just remain at home and they have no choice but to pander to their views because they can't go and tell the Muslim institution that your religion is wrong. Under our side, when you promote atheism Sorry. actively, what happens is you can go and tell the Muslim institution that yes, your religion is wrong, we believe in equality for women and we're going to allow the world to enter the workforce and given the right to vote. And that is why I side is better. Then the second speaker also said this whole weird idea about the organic change, right? How the government should not implement a top-down policy when these religions will change on their own. But how long should we wait for these religions to change? Religions usually take 50 or 100 years to change. And yet, at the same time, millions of people are being harmed on the ground. In Saudi Arabia, a woman is forced to stay home. She cannot go and drive. She does not have the right to vote. In Uganda, when homosexualities are, homosexual, are discriminated against, they're not given their rights. 
simply because they're homosexual. We simply can't wait for these religions to change. We have to have the government come in, implement a top-down policy by actively promoting atheism and push this change through in a much faster manner, preventing people from being harmed on the ground. So their organic change does not work on their side, and it's also a huge concession from their side because they agree that government's pandering to religions does not achieve the purpose of a liberal government. And if going by their logic, let's push their logic even further, right? So now the US government should never have abolished slavery. They should just wait for organic change to take place. They should never implement a top-down policy abolishing slavery and things like that. And that's why we believe our side is much better. Then we also told you in the last substantive, this whole idea of how big tensions exist right now in the status quo between atheists and religious groups. What is their only response? Oh, if he implements our policy, there'll be a huge public backlash against governments. But let me tell you something. On the comparative, their side is even worse. Because what their side is essentially saying, that in order to avoid the public backlash, from religious institutions, we should simply pander to all of their views. So if a Muslim institution says that women should be kept at home, they will keep women at home because they want to avoid this public backlash. If a Catholic church tells you that abortion is wrong, they will, leave the, they will make abortion illegal. Why? Because they want to avoid this public backlash. We are fine with public backlash taking place if we are able to give people their freedoms, if we are able to achieve the purpose of a liberal government, which is what our side stands for. And they also never really tackle the logic of our substantive. Because what we showed you right now in the substantive is that the most prominent in these are those who have extremist views, who continue to criticize the Bible or the Quran without having any sense of Koreans. What happens when the government steps in is that they're able to give it a more moderate voice. When they give it a more moderate voice, tensions between atheists and religious groups decrease. Yes, I may decrease, I may disagree with that atheist, but at least I can understand where it's coming from because the government is giving the atheism a moderate voice. But before I move on, yes sir. Could you please finally describe how precisely would the government step in and promote this atheism? Okay, sure, I'll discuss it now. In Singapore, education system, how do they promote atheism? For example, when they talk about things like evolution and things like that, they don't say God created the world, they say things like talk about things like Big Bang Theory and things like that. They also hand out pamphlets. They make it clear in the education system that atheism is the way to go. God didn't create your world, God didn't have anything to do with how you are being, how you're living, and things like that. So that is how we're going to actively promote atheism. Even though it's not a burden on our side, I also can give you a clear policy on how atheism can be actively promoted. Then he also told us in that first substantive, this whole idea that now religion is very good for people, it gives them psychological benefits and things like that. And look, we are fine with that. We agree that religions can be good. But we also have to agree that some people can interpret in a, their religion in a way that goes against the objectives of a liberal government, right? So for example, some people might interpret the Quran in a way that says that they should go and join ISIS and waste war on terror, right? And this obviously goes against the objectives of a liberal government. Therefore, we feel on the comparative, our side is far better. We agree religion might have some benefits, but we also have to agree that might, some people might misinterpret it in a way that goes against their objectives. Therefore, the government should actively promote atheism so they can cut out all of this misinterpretation and best achieve their own objectives, best achieve their own aim. And that is why we have our side in this debate. Then they also told us this whole idea about religious charities. Hold on a minute. We never said we would abolish religious charities. If religious charities are doing good for the world and doing good for the country, we're completely fine with them existing. What we're not fine with them is when religious charities use their religion and do something, do implement policies or radicalize people that goes against the objectives of a liberal government. Then we also told you back from our first percentage this whole idea about reducing fragmentation within society. How the purpose of a liberal government is to be neutral. All they had to respond to this was, oh, atheism is a religion, and now we're promoting the religion of atheism over others, therefore the government is not neutral. And I've already told you in my start of speech, we're completely fine with promoting atheism as a religion because it best achieves the purpose of a religious government. Sorry. They no longer have to pander to the views of a religious institution. Before I move on, yes sir. So then you are admitting that you're actually picking sides when it comes to religion. Yes, I'm admitting that. If you want me, if you want to push me all the way, yes, I'm admitting that because we best achieve the purposes of a liberal government when we pick sides of atheism. That is why we are very proud to oppose. Then they also told us that, look, listen to this, right? You said that politicians, the first speaker said, that politicians have their own personal views. And if the majority of society agrees with the religious views of the politician, the politician has the right to impose his views on the people. Sure. So for example, if the majority of Hindus in India believe that we should rape a girl if she goes out of our house and meets another boy, they are okay with this, right? We simply cannot allow religious views to actually be imposed on the majority of society. Even if the majority of society believe it's right, the purpose of a liberal government is to give everyone their freedom to ensure equality between genders. So we cannot allow religious views to change this. No thank you. Man. Then they also told them that how we are preventing people from gaining the right to religious freedom. And our first response to this is, we never said that we are going to forcibly convert you from your religion to atheism. All we're saying is you're actively promoting atheism as a branch of thought. And if you want to convert, you're free to convert. If you want to remain a Muslim, you're free to remain a Muslim. But at the same time, you cannot do things that goes against the objectives of a liberal government. And we also told you in a third substantive, 
how much governments do not have the uh, incentive to make decisions based on religious stances. So, for example, they will never criminalize homosexuality and not pander to the views of the religious institutions, something which we kept emphasizing right from first because something which we have never really tackled on their side. All they had responded to this was secularity, secularity, secularity. But I've already shown you in a secularity government, the people, the governments do pander to the views of the religious institutions because they cannot tell the religion that they are wrong. And for this, because we showed you why we are best able to unify society and promote the ideals of a, religious, of, a, of a liberal government. Things such as right to freedom of speech, things such as equality between both genders, things such as equality for homosexuals. I've never been more proud to propose. Thank you. and a truly neutral government only listens to these people and never attempts to fetter with their preferences. I'm going to, do, I'm going to answer three questions in my speech. First, I'm going to look at whether they're actually effective. And secondly, I'm going to judge the status quo and their plan. Uh, so secondly, in terms of neutrality. And thirdly, in terms of government policy and welfare. So first, on effectivity. In this debate, they had this great burden of not only showing what happens after they implement the plan, but how actually the plan leads to the benefits. Because every, sing every single of their arguments assumes that some people will convert from their current religions to, some, to, to atheism. All their arguments assume this. The only explanation we got was after our BOI in the first speech. Well, let's look still, even if we have this little explanation, well, it's still inefficient. Well, firstly, we think that uh, people take their religions very personally. They have their very personal, uh, they have this very personal relationship with their God. Religions are something in which they are born that explain the world. We don't think something like education or a pamphlet can change it. So, second, no, 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 thank you, sir. Secondly, in terms of effectivity, we think that. Uh, as I will show you later, there's this great backlash. Therefore, even if their method actually were effective, simply by picking one uh, religion instead of others, you create a backlash. In the point of effectivity, I wanted to show you that they've never shown us how they how their benefits come. Therefore, even uh, therefore, uh, re 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 no, no, thank you, madam. Regardless of uh, how 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 good their benefits actually are, so far uh, we've won this debate because they never come. But even if they came, I'm going to tell you two things: that the state quo is more neutral and more secure on neutrality. They started out this big idea how this system has many dif disputes and differences. How our society is fragmented. We don't think this is true. Simply, uh, we as humans differ. Uh, in terms of identity on the many levels. Some of, us, some of us are men, some of us are gay, some of us uh, believe in different gods. We don't think that uh, simply, uh, we see actually in our society that simply uh, because we're different, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have disputes between one another, right? But even if we have disputes, what, uh, uh, even if we have disputes, then it is the government says to solve these dis disputes, to, to teach people how to be uh, more accepting, not to uh, ban, uh, not, not, no, thank you, not, no, thank you, not try to abolish the religion at all. Therefore, even if our study were to be fragmented, they should teach people acceptance, not try to abolish these religions at all. Dear ladies and gentlemen, in the status quo, they brought us, they, they brought up this idea that our status quo is not neutral. Well, we say it is. In our, uh, in, in, in the status quo, the government gives uh, all, uh, all the religions the same initial conditions. If those religions do not say something that is against the law, those religions then can freely say what they want, gain supporters. <laughs> If uh, from those initial conditions they get to a state where yes there are so some religion gets uh, more followers some religion get less but so the disproportionality is neutral because it resulted from the neutral initial conditions the disproportionality is neutral unbiased and unfettered with because uh, those religions in the first place had a fair sense from which a disproportionality was um, was created what on the other hand is very biased and is not natural is cherry picking one single religion. Uh, saying that this religion is better, and then um, uh, advertising uh, advertising this religion. Um, 
uh, uh, here we see that how one distribution is ne neutral while cherry picking one is never neutral and they're, uh, so, and they're cherry picking uh, and being biased. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what happens in a circular state. The US government can't tell the Jewish people that they're wrong. They have to keep pandering to the Jewish lobby groups, leading to so yes, much yes. Israel. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'll, I'll talk about it in my second point. But what they do when they pick one uh, one religion is that they intervene. Therefore, firstly, the system I've shown you is no more natural because atheism is higher than all the other religions. And secondly, their dispute because when they fall, this is the backlash I promise you to talk about. We see that uh, people in the status quo do not have disputes because they said government sees all the religions the same, they uh, it gives all the religions the same conditions. When government prioritizes one religion, that is the point when someone uh, feels as if the government prioritized some other god over his, and as if the government and prioritize some other view of the rule over this, that's the moment when those people are mad at the government and uh, when those people start uh, the, those people start to dispute and society gets fragmented. Ladies and gentlemen, if you change the neutral state, it is then that you're biased, it is then that your society gets full of disputes. What they've been proposing the whole time was never neutral. So, uh, now to the point of security, uh, in terms of government policy and welfare. First of all, we think that we're talking about liberal governments and you're being very extreme examples. In liberal governments, even if whole society were to want women to be uh, stoned, it would never happen. In, in, in a liberal society which respects human rights, we say that something simply never happened. This is out of the debate. But secondly, so, no, no, thank you. But even if this weren't true, we allow, yes, there might be some value judgment from these politicians. But, um, Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing that a liberal government can do is to listen to its people. Or if there is some value judgment, then it is because people elected politicians, it is because people express their will, they, they've uh, clearly told that uh, that we want uh, a politician which maybe is Catholic because we want Catholic reforms to be included. Therefore, uh, like by definition, if we vote for some government, then that government by definition is biased, right? What we say is that this kind of bias is good because it came, as, uh, as it is in liberal government, from the people's uh, from, from, from the people's past. And we say that if the government is biased uh, because the people voted for it, then, then no, 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 thank you, sir, then this is, uh, then, then this is what the liberal government should do, and therefore it should only do what, uh, what, what the people say. What is important in this point is that government, uh, like they all, they always view government as someone who does things they are best. We don't think this is true. A government doesn't do uh, what science says is the best economic policy. On the other hand, what a true liberal government does, it's what its people say, even if some things might not be. Uh, no, justified as others. A liberal government only does what its people tell it to do. A liberal government only listens to it. Therefore, in terms of liberal government, we, we, we don't judge policies as good or bad. We don't say that, no, 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 thank you, that under their model, maybe they will have a, like, like a better rule. We, in terms of liberal government, or when we determine what, uh, what uh, su such a liberal government should do, we look at whether it, uh, whether it fulfills the will of the people. We said, in our plan, the government, even if it is biased, it is biased because of the will of the people, and therefore fulfills its primary, um, it, it, its primary purpose. Further on welfare and government policies. And this is, connects me to our split argument about how charity creates welfare, to which they've, uh, to which they've almost never reacted. We say that in their system, uh, assuming their system will work, some people from, from these religions will flow, will, will flow to atheism and therefore will have no more incentive to help. Why? What? The reason why religious groups are unique is because they can convince people that there is a God, there's a higher purpose, that there is something out there which then can make them help. Atheism doesn't have anything like that. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we exempt uh, religious groups from taxes is because they can provide these kind of help, is because they can provide this kind of help that nor government nor atheism will never, um, um, will, um, will never allow. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this debate, we have to remember two things. Firstly, that they've never shown us how this plan will actually work. None of their, uh, in reality, we don't know how their benefits will be delivered. But even if we don't, then, on their very own criteria of neutrality and welfare, we're less biased, with less fragmentation, and because we only listen to our people, we do, we do what is best for them. We're so proud to oppose.
Now please welcome the proposition to fly speaker.